And so how do we, how do we avoid these pitfalls when we're planning a class? So for one is I invite you to connect with your big why. So why is it that you're teaching yoga? Why, what is it that you get out of doing a yoga practice? Um, if you come back around to that um, big why, then it becomes a little bit easier to generate ideas for what to practice next. So, um, and your big why, it might not be like super existential, like, oh, um, if you're just making a yoga class, you could be like, okay, why, why is it that I'm showing up to teach this particular group of students? I want to be able to teach them to relax more. So let's just say, um, for the sake of this discussion, your why is I want to help my students to relax. So then you use your big why to set an intention for the class. And your, um, so your intention is basically answering how is it that you're going to teach your big why. So why am I teaching this class? I want to help people to relax more. Um, how am I going to do that today? So if you are um, planning a class that you want to help people relax, that might mean, okay, well, what postures relate to that? Okay, I, I could do um, more forward bends. I could do more twists. I could focus on longer holds rather than a lot of um, repetition through um, strenuous transitions. It could be um, more laying down. So that kind of gives you an idea of um, some postures that could work for your practice and also um, sort of a general approach to doing it, whether you wanna have a lot of repetition and vinyasa, or if you wanna have a little bit more still kind of practice or somewhere in between. And then, so once you have um, your big why, you've addressed how you might do that, what kinds of postures, and then you're gonna follow some fundamental principles to create a sequence from those two things. 